Welcome back to Dr. Finance. This is a paper written by George Stigler, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1982. And this is what he published at the Journal of Political Economy in 1961, titled The Economics of Information. One should hardly have to tell academicians that information is a valuable resource, knowledge is power, and yet it occupies a slum dwelling in the town of economics. Mostly, it is ignored. The best technology is assumed to be known. The relationship of commodities to consumer preferences is a datum. And one of the information producing industries, advertising, is treated with a hostility that economists normally reserve for tariffs or monopolists. There are a great many problems in economics for which this neglect of ignorance is no doubt permissible or even desirable, but there are some for which this is not true, and I hope to show that some important aspects of economic organization take on a new meaning when they are considered for the viewpoint of the search for information. In the present paper, I shall attempt to analyze systematically one important problem of information, the ascertainment of market price. 1. The nature of search. Prices change with varying frequency in all markets, and unless a market is completely centralized, no one will know all the prices which various sellers or buyers quote at any given time. A buyer or seller who wishes to ascertain the most favorable price must can canvass <clears throat> various sellers or buyers a phenomenon I shall term search. The amount of dispersion of asking prices of sellers is a problem to be discussed later, but it is important to emphasize immediately the fact that dispersion is ubiquitous even for homogeneous goods. Two examples of asking prices of consumer and producer goods respectively, are displayed in Table 1. The automobile prices for an ideal model, identical model, were those quoted with an average amount of higgling, their average was $24.36. Their range from $23.50 to $25.15, and their standard deviation, 42 the prices for anthracite coal were bids for federal government purchases and had a mean of $16.9 per ton, a range from $15.46 to $18.92, and a standard deviation of $1.15. In both cases, the range of prices was significant on almost any criterion. Price dispersion is a manifestation and indeed it is the measure of ignorance in the market. Dispersion is a biased measure of ignorance because there is never absolute homogeneity in the commodity if we include the terms of sale within the concept of the commodity. Thus, some automobile, declare, uh, uh, some automobile dealers might perform more service or carry a larger range of varieties in the stock, and a portion of the observed dispersion is presumably attributable to such differences. But it would be metaphysical and fruitless to assert that all dispersion is due to heterogeneity. At any time, then, there will be a frequency distribution of the prices quoted by sellers. Any buyer seeking the commodity would pay whatever price is asked by the seller whom he happened to canvas, 
if he were content, content to buy from the first seller. But if the dispersion of price quotations of sellers is at all large, as at all large relative to the cost of search, it will pay on average to canvas several sellers. Consider the following primitive example. Let sellers be equally divided between asking prices of $2 and $3. Then the distribution of minimum prices as search is lengthened is shown in Table 2. The buyer who canvasses two sellers instead of one has an expected saving of 25%, uh, 25 cents per unit, etc. The frequency distributions of asking and offering prices have not been studied sufficiently to support any hypothesis as to their nature. Asking prices are probably skewed to the right as a rule because the seller of reproducible goods will have some minimum but no maximum limit on the price he can accept. If <clears throat> the distribution of asking price is normal. The distributions of minimum price encountered in searches of one, two, and three sellers will be those displayed in figure one. If the distribution is rectangular, the corresponding distributions would be those shown in panel B. The latter assumption does not receive strong support from the evidence, but it will be used for a time because of its alphabetic, uh, algebraic simplicity. Advertising. Advertising is, among other things, a method of providing potential buyers with knowledge of the identity of sellers. It is clearly an immensely po uh, powerful instrument for the elimination of ignorance comparable in force to the use of the book instead of the oral discourse to communicate knowledge. A small $5 advertisement in a, meta a metropolitan newspaper re reaches in the sense of being read perhaps 25,000 readers or 50 readers per penny, and even if only a tiny fraction are potential buyers or sellers, the economy they achieve in search as compared with uninstructed solicitation may be overwhelming. Let us begin with advertisements designed only to identify sellers. The identification of buyers will not be treated explicitly, and the advertising of price will be discussed later. The <clears throat> identification of sellers is necessary because the identity of sellers changes over time, but much more because of the turnover of buyers. In every consumer market, there will be a st stream of new buyers resulting from immigration or attainment of financial maturity, requiring knowledge of sellers, and in addition, it will be necessary to refresh the knowledge of infrequent buyers. Conclusions The identification of sellers and the discovery of their prices are only one sample of the vast role of the search for information in economic life. Similar problems exist in the detection of profitable fields for investment and in the worker's choice of industry, location, and job. The search for knowledge on the quality of goods, which has been stud studiously avoided in this paper, is perhaps no more important, but certainly analytically more difficult. Quality has not yet been successfully specified by econom economics, and this elusiveness extends to all problems in which it enters. Some forms of economic organizations may be explic explicable chiefly as devices for eliminating uncertainties in quality. 
the department store, as Milton Friedman has suggested to me, may be viewed as an institution which searches for the superior qualities of goods and guarantees that they are good quality. Reputation is a word which denotes the persistence of quality and reputation commands a price or exacts a penalty because it economizes on search. When economists deplore the reliance of the consumer on reputation, although they uh, chose they choose the articles they read and their colleagues in good part on this basis, they implicitly assume that the consumer has a large laboratory ready to deliver current information quickly and gratuitous, gratuitously. Ignorance is like sub-zero weather. By a sufficient expenditure, its effects upon people can be kept within tolerable or even comfortable bounds, but it would be wholly uneconomic entirely to eliminate all its efforts. And just as an analysis of man's shelter and apparel would be somewhat incomplete if cold weather is ignored, so also our understanding of economic life will be incomplete if we do not systematically take account of the cold winds of ignorance.